when I go through this process of, of sort of navigating the, kind of the cultural experience out there, it's oftentimes, um, you know, what, what, is, what is what am I doing going to say about me and how I live with that? And when she didn't wear this dress, I decided that whether or not it came off in the right way, I think I'd be living it. <laughs> and a good thing still is a really for um, the same sort of mental process I think that I make throughout my day, whether that's dropping off my son at school, whether it's how I present myself at a wedding, or how I feel about myself when I'm making the markets, and sort of going through the world, and it's um, the kind of, the context of culture, and how I relate myself to you, and how I want to present myself to you, and, and how I'm sort of thinking as I sort of travel along minute to minute, and, and this is also the sort of thinking that the reason I bring this up is this is the way I'm thinking when I construct these portraits. I'm looking at them, you know, what does this location say? What does this prop say? What does it mean? And, and does it have a meaning that might shift you too far in the wrong direction? Um, you know, sort of going through the semiotics of, of any sign that, that I'm presenting and, and kind of combine them, but really considering, it's that, up to me, it's that similar kind of thinking that I that I'm using, and um, I wanted to say that this work began, began to be in part from a photograph that was in my mother's high school yearbook, and she grew up in a cob farm in, a, in Central Texas, in a very small high school, and there was six in a graduating class, of which she was the uh, well friend. And um, <laughs> there was a photograph in the yearbook of a woman in, in what was to be her prom dress, and it was a beautiful pleated tool, 50s, dress and it was extremely perfect and elegant and she had her hair in a short flip and it was just beautiful and that she was standing on the porch of an old farmhouse, just an old crumbled wooden house. And somehow that just the shift of the, the context for me just spoke to me. I mean, it's a photograph I've seen many times over the years and it sort of stuck with me and it's it's I think my earlier work might have been a little bit more influenced by something as simple as a dress in a context or a woman presented in a certain way in a context that I thought carried a sort of similar, I think it wasn't even similar, but I think it was sparked by this woman who seemed so elegant. She just had the simplicity about life. There was a simplicity about her life, if I could extrapolate what I know about my mother's life from it, and yet she had that sort of spirit of, of, of beauty and wanted to have fun and kind of go out and look for best. It was just an excitement that I kind of really stuck with from that photograph. And I, I similarly think that it's a similar context implication thing that goes throughout the series over the last five years, whether it's as simple as it used to be or it's progressed in some ways. But um, you may have seen my other statement in which I discuss how it's really interesting to me that the part of our mind that can, um, that's, that's sort of desirous and it's not, it's just an unrepressed part of our mind where things, um, are not as morally constricted, and yet this work is very formal in some ways, and I see that as a, a sort of a human desire to, to have orderliness and to sort of dispel mystery, and not not for any other reason than just the sort of process of our human urge to kind of to make sense of things, and and so there's both the process of decoding the, these pieces. I mean, most people when they experience this work, they're sort of trying to figure out what it means, and and. And yet, there's a part of each sort of narrative or each, or the logic of each of these pieces that ultimately won't yield, it kind of will not acquiesce to you. Um, um, it, seemed, it seemed that people have that experience and can see it. And, um, and to me, that, that place is probably best described as the place, the sort of mindset of a person who's had a few margaritas, where <laughs> dreams and reality and fantasy, it really doesn't matter how they slip together, because they do. And it's a very easy, it's a very, a sort of magical way of thinking, a magical place in the mind. And, and, and that's, you know, much more, I don't know, I really hope that as, as sort of formal and straight as these can be, that they really, that that, that kind of magic works. Um, but sometimes I don't want to People say that when I try to sort of explain that's what's going on, but you know, if, if not, if nothing else, then I'd like to hopefully have this work work in the way that I think John Keats had a expression of negative 
a NATO capability, which is sort of this spark, which hopefully an individual will take some element or aspect of the work and kind of launch with it and to go forth from there on their own. And um, I also think that the work kind of sometimes speaks for something larger than life, something emblematic, when we represent something larger than ourselves, something kind of mythic or, you know, and something yet also the extremely intimate. And even when um, people are still confounded with my work, sometimes they still sort of have this unsettled feeling about it. Often what they come to me with when they've kind of gone through the process of becoming the meaning is they come to me with really intimate, beautiful, elegant things. And whether I had that in my mind at all, you know, before or after the process of making the work, you know, that that, that comes back to me sometimes is really the most I can hope for. And so if nothing more than that, I'm, I'm very grateful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.